I know you from the NNL East. We met here many years ago. What was your first NNL? It was the last one at the church, which I believe was number three or number four. I've been to everyone since, except 1998. I missed one. And the first one I came to, I didn't know anybody. But I've met so many people through this hobby. As I've said before, it's not really the cars, it's the people. It's the people here. Doug White with Model Car Muse. I'm here with Carl Sheffer. He gets kidded a lot because we love him so much and we put him on screen whenever we can. Carl, as always, has some cool stuff. I'm a big street machine guy. I like building stuff that I would love to have myself and what I might see on, on, the, on the road. Uh, 1964 station wagon. I grew up with station wagons uh, in our family as far back as I can remember and my dad was a Pontiac guy. This is a 64 that started out as a Polar Lights kit, GTO. The roof is from the 66 Chevelle kit, and I just molded them together, melted them together, whatever, and uh, lowered it, got some wheels from uh, eBay. It's a cool combination of all the GM parts. You can use a Chevy back roof with all the Pontiac parts up front, and they come together. Yep. Did they just drop in? Pretty close, pretty close. Uh, most of it is the GTO, the root, just the roof, and I uh, built the fins and put the uh, 67 Chevy Chevelle taillights in there. You recognize him, Jason Haskam from? The Blue Ox Model Shop. One of our great YouTubers. He's brought pulled pork. What was your build about? What, what got you started on this? Honestly, I wanted to do something different. And they came out with a pulling truck and I'm like, not many pulling trucks out there. Yeah. So I, I jumped on it and uh, I had, it had to be pink and yellow. That's what I saw in my head, right. but it was the wrong pink on the box. So I kind of messed around and I believe it or not, that's a, um, a Tamiya rattle can that that is. Looks great. And uh, yeah, I just kind of went for it. Did a little bit of extra detailing on the engine just to try and pull some, some detail out of it. And there it is. So it's box stock for the most part. For the most part. That's some awesome paint. Yeah. Good yeah. build. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Like Very I said, nice. there's not many of them. I don't think there's another one here. I haven't walked around all the way yet. <laughs> this is your first NNL? Yes. What do you think? It's crazy, but in a very good way. Yeah, it's it's just so much, and uh, this stuff is just so inspiring. You've been to the vendor rooms? Uh, so far, I've spent the entire day in the vendor rooms. That's right. <laughs> Day's half over. Yeah. Car exactly. is full. Car is definitely full. Yeah, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun. This is a '70 Camaro. Full bumper, which I love. I do not like the bumperettes. Ooh, okay. I do not like them. Everybody else does. I'm a full bumper guy. Uh, big block Chevy. Uh, this grill is an actual AMT original that I still had in my parts box. And it slipped right in. Saving it to use on that. Oh, well, I had it in an original kit that didn't make it. <laughs> Let's just okay. say that. <laughs> no, wait, that body is, is what vintage? The body is the newer kit. It's the newer kit. Yeah, but the, uh, the grill itself, which popped right in, is from the original kit. Big block. It's got that great spoiler. That spoiler, I love that spoiler on that car. Because when it just drops off, it just... It's yeah. gone. It needs that little bump in the back. Yep. I've always loved that. Me too. That big straight line with the big straight bumper in front that runs the width of the car. It's not the split bumper. I think they go really well yeah. together looking at yeah. it. Didn't think of that, but that's, yeah. Yeah. And that great paint color. Yep. VHT engine burnt orange. Burnt orange. It's an engine color. Yes. So it can handle the heat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was hoping it didn't melt the body. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I tested it, you know, the whole spoon test thing and sure. good and safe. Yeah, and just light coats, light coats and build it up. Yeah. It's an amazing color. It is. It really, it really is. is. It just it shines. It looks like a factory color. Yeah. You know, it's like something that. they would do in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, like when they got into a little later, was it 73 when the like the Corvettes, they had uh, Ontario orange. Yes. And that great gold color, you know, all those vibrant colors. Yeah. You got to love those Craig SS. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And Mickey Thompson's, these are N50 by 15s, because that had the, the biggest tire you could get. And those are from uh, Fireball. And it sits just, just like it should. That's what I tried. A little high in the back. <laughs> and no side pipes. Not a side pipe guy. Not a side pipe guy. Only well, saying that because it's motion Camaros yeah. were real popular with side pipes. Yes. It looks nice and clean. I can't do them. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I 
I took um, leftover balsa wood from the model airplane days and I built the model over the winter and I had boxes of model parts that were left over from building models over the years and I ended up taking all of the promotional things, the engine stands and making the interior of the model from all the parts and I've got a nice little setup. I, I built a, a like a mezzanine and I lit it up underneath with LEDs and just had fun doing it. I ended up making an electrical panel. I put the refrigerator in. I actually plugged the refrigerator in. So I cut uh, money and put money on the desks and magazines in the drawers and just to make it interesting, but it's very busy. A lot of, lot of interior uh, detail. Had some of the models and I ended up using the models as a display. And when I build new models, I usually set them in front of the garage and use the garage setup as a backdrop. It just brings so much life to the models. They're, they're so much more uh, animated when there's things around it, you know. I like to cut. So if you notice some of the models, they're shortened, they're chopped. Or this one is a 49 Ford pancaked hood. It doesn't look like the front of a Ford anymore. This is a chopped Mercury with the door and the hood open and pancaked. This, this was actually a, a funny car body, a Miss Deal, and it was a throwaway. I just had it laying around, and I ended up chopping it, sectioning it, moving wheel wells, and doing a lot of work on that. This was a resin body, and the hood didn't open, the doors didn't open, so I did all of the work in the interior on that. That was um, evergreen plastic, and it was quarter round, one millimeter, and I put that on the hood and made the louvers. Fun project. How long have you been coming to NNL? The year before the COVID was my first visit, although I've known about it forever, it's been fun. Incredible building capacity of these people is just amazing, fun to watch. I only built one diorama, and I don't have a lot of cars. I, I, this car I worked on for probably two or three years. You know, that one, the same thing. Some of these I've had since I was a teenager. You know, I've done it over three or four times because I wasn't happy with it, you know. But it's fun. I, I think my dad gave me a promo car that he got at a car dealership. Probably about six or seven years old in the 50s, you know. First, it didn't have an interior in it. It was just a friction motor. And uh, that was one of my first models. And I went from there at a dollar a kit, you know. Uh, Things have changed. And a non-General Motors vehicle. Yeah, yeah. I'm no big Mopar guy, but I like the, the dusters. I did it kind of stealthy because I dropped the 440 into it. I put the six barrels on there from uh, Fireball models also. And I went with the gunmetal color. And then you can, it kind of hides the stripes there. It, they're so subtle. And I took, and I took off the call out because I didn't want to advertise what I had or what I didn't have. Okay, yeah. So like a street yeah. racer kind of thing. Yeah. So I painted the duster gunmetal from Tamiya. Wanted to give it a stealthy look. Put the, uh, it's a uh, parts by hearts. Regular grill instead of the shark tooth. Again, to give it that, that stealthy look. Poverty caps. These side windows are notorious for popping out when you build the car. So I popped them out and I always put personalized plates, stuffed, stuffed with a 440. So there's our stealth mode. It fits perfectly. So, oh, beautiful fit. And that's a pet peeve of mine. Hoods that don't fit. Yeah. So I, I spent a lot of time with that. Oh, and now for the look. Oh, that's the look. That's the look of business right there. And that's from Hearts Parts, that hood. I like the fact that the color is so deep yeah. against the matte finish of that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stand out, it blends well. I see a little warmth or maybe purple in that paint. It seems to give yeah. a little purple off, I yeah. Like yeah. And then the tires are a little fatter in the back. Again, with the, uh, with the dog dish, you really can't notice it from the side as much, but that gives you that extra traction. And of course, I got the air shocks on there. <laughs> How appropriate, perfect. A 440 in a car like that. Yeah. That's that light. You're still going to violently spin those tires. Oh yeah, so yeah, probably so. <laughs> Why not?
But a great launch. I can't imagine that car launching like a pro stock. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, as YouTubers, there was a group build? Yes. Or yeah, that was the United Scale Automotive Content Creators of YouTube. Right, on Facebook. On fa and Facebook, yes. Let's go check that out. This is my USAC build. Luca C and Mark Batson host this build every year. And you have to build a specific kit. You can build it any way you want, but it has to be a specific kit. A huge fan of the 70s and early 80s style street machines. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I went. I added the, uh, the Hemi from a CUDA, a 124 scale monogram CUDA kit. So it was the right scale. Luca actually said, don't put a 125th scale engine in that. It won't look right. <laughs> so I uh, swapped that in and just parts box wheels and tires. And uh, this, this I had a lot of fun with. As I was able to watch the first year's build, you couldn't participate. You had to be invited in the first year. And I watched that and I thought, how cool would it be if I could get into that at some point in time? And then here I am the next year. And that build early on, that was a 40 Ford? Yes, the first build was the 44. It could have been the sedan, uh, the coupe, or the delivery. Okay. Yeah, so. That was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I love that. It's got a great period look, especially with the yellow uh, slapper bars. Yes. It's yeah. like, oh yeah. Oh, for sure. And I had to put the, you know, the out of control on the quarter panel. I thought that, would, that was a good fit for that too, so. All right, so at this point, what's on your bench? What's coming next? Uh, so Heather and I actually started the uh, his and hers Land Rover build. So we're doing them completely box stock, but she she has her colors picked out. I've, you know, we're doing them differently, obviously, but I told her I would not add any extra detail and I would build it step by step with her so that we can debut them at the Classic Plastic Show coming up in October. So as of right now, that's my main focus. Yeah. It's a cool build, and you can yeah. work together. Exactly, yeah. It's always nice having her in the shop. I enjoy working with her in the shop. Well, thank you. Well, thank it's you. always good seeing you. Good seeing you too, yeah. sir. Enjoy the rest of the show. Make sure you see all the models. I will give it my best shot. All right. <laughs> cool. All right, thank you.